Okay, gang, sitting in front of you is nine tenths of what I use when I'm shooting video. Nine tenths. You don't see a huge tripod here. I do have three large tripods that I do use, but most often my ProMaster is the one that comes out. The ProMaster it can it sits in my toolbox. It, it you know it, it has adjustable legs. It has a real nice ball mount that gives nice smooth fluid movements. I really like the ball mount. The Ravelli has a ball mount also, but it's a pistol grip type, so you squeeze it and move it around. Uh, but this uh, ProMaster uh, was actually the most expensive tripod that I have purchased at uh, right around seventy dollars. Uh, yeah, it's small, but it is so versatile. It allows me to do so much. I can take and mount uh, via this mounting plate, mount my GoPro to it, and I can even flip, take the ball, turn it over, and put it on the underside, and you know, get this far away from a subject or whatever I'm, whatever I happen to be doing. All right, that's enough of the Pro Master. You saw this mount. Uh, with both of my GoPros, that is what I use, is the quick attach, detach, and I keep them protected, just this is a nice little uh, felt bag uh, from a wallet that I got from uh, Alpine Swiss. So that just slides over the GoPro Hero 3 to keep the screen protected when it's in the bag. And then, like I said, it has the quick detach clip on it. Now the reason for the Crazy S on here is so that I can use it on my Steadicam curve and have it nice and balanced. And the Steadicam curve just helps make everything more fluid when I'm walking around with the camera instead of just walking around and having it jiggle around and jerk around. So the Steadicam curve is an invaluable part of the kit. I do not have it balanced or even have the, uh, and I'll show you that. This is just a Ravelli bag that came with my large tripod that is out in the shop and it slides right over and helps protect the Session 4. So the Session 4 also has uh, the clip. This one has an integrated rubber stopper to keep it from falling out of the mount, which I really like. You do have that ability with these. It's the white stoppers that come around that has a loop that goes around on onto your uh, adjusting knob. But anyway, okay, now skip on up. Here's another mount that is not so dissimilar from this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Only you remove it from its existing mount and place it on there. This little Joby I've had for years and years and years and it's an awesome little tripod and I, I'm just I'm floored by the movement and fluidity of how well it operates and there's a little push button here so it allows you to move your handle wherever you want it or need it with I believe six positions uh, it's got the crazy legs that you can wrap around just about anything and also the ends are let me find something here, hang on I got something right here the feet are magnetic which is just freaking awesome there's always something metallic or magnetic around I recently did a video on my four, four minutes sorry I keep checking the times I don't want to make these really long um, did a video just on washing Clifford and this mount was the only mount that I used. Now I'm sticking this thing all over Clifford while I'm washing Clifford, sweeping Clifford out and it, and it, that one's going to take a long time to edit so and it's just a goofy video. I'll be surprised if it gets 10 views but I'm just trying new camera work, new camera angles since I've got such small cameras and I'm capable of doing it with the, ver the variety of mounts, the suction cup mount is also an invaluable tool with the vehicles. I'm able to stick these on the windshield 
uh, for viewing me or for viewing uh, the road. But one thing that I did do is I got a number of the 3M sticky back mounts like this and stuck them directly to the windshield and to the dash so that I can just clip the camera in and go. So you guys have already seen uh, videos with me using that setup with the dumbass with her tablet. Uh, moving along. This is a cell phone mount. Spring loaded, stick your cell phone in there. When I'm using YouTube Capture and I want to keep the camera still, this is what comes out. Another nice little feature that I only paid $3.90 for is this shutter button. And this works with the iOS systems or Androids. Got it off of GearBest. GearBest.com um, I can take individual photos or I can start it recording. In fact, if I turn it on and then it pairs, which it just did, I can even turn my phone on with it. Of course, it's going to make a liar out of me right now. Hey Siri! Nope, it's not going to do it. Alright, but when I've got here, let's go ahead and turn it on here. Open the camera. I'm not sure what you said there. Open the camera. Okay, now I can just hit that and it'll snap a picture. So, anyway, that's what that is. That's what it's for. And then, like I say, this can simply mount. And then this has a universal cord or 20 to mount on any kind of tripod, any kind of tripod at all. So there we go. Alright, that's that. And we're moving right along. <coughs> this teeny tiny little $14 cable is actually my bore scope. There are six really bright LED lights there that are adjustable on the USB. I use the USB compatibility in conjunction with my F8 because my F8 has a full-size USB port on it so I can plug it in it goes into CameraFi and I've got direct access and a very large view screen for my borescope really 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 neat little gadget for only 14 bucks and it works really well uh, the clarity is not perfect but if you get it in just the right spot, good focus. Then, no, this is not a selfie stick. It looks like a selfie stick. It acts like a selfie stick. People think it's a selfie stick, but it is not a selfie stick. It is a monopod. And it's, instead of being a bipod or a tripod, it is a monopod. And uh, another high quality product. Uh, from Jack's cameras, same place that I got the Hero Session for. It enables me to get into super tight spaces that I can't reach, so I can get in and see. Uh, it also, my Ravelli extends up to 72 inches. This has a quarter 20 universal mount here, so I can extend another, and I don't even know what the full extended length is on this. So in the desk is a tape measure. Let's see what the overall length of this sucker is. It looks like about four feet, roughly. Yep, we're right at four feet. So that gives me an additional four feet on top of the five feet, the 72 uh, inch reach. So I can get real high aerial shots and stick that camera way up there, looking down on me, whatever I want to do. So. Uh, for the little bit of money that I have invested and a little bit of money that you can invest, you can put together a system that works for you that will just get you started. And that's all you have to do is get started. It's taking that first step, that first giant leap. Once you take that first giant leap, uh, then you're going to be well on your way. You'll, you're going to find your niche, what works best for you. Uh, you may not be a Casey Neistat getting over 5 million subscribers but that's not what it's all about it's all about just having fun doing what you can do 
showing people what you do, your daily life, your daily grind, what have you. Just get in there and do it. Just hit the 10 minute mark. Last thing. This kit right here is a Pelican waterproof case that holds my spare batteries. I've got four spare GoPro batteries in here. My GoPro battery charger and memory cards as well as attachments for the bore scope and a small USB micro card reader. Uh, everything fits in here just fine and it's small and compact and it allows me to take everything I need with me wherever I go. And if need be, both of these cameras outside of their cases fit inside here. So if I'm in a super wet environment, I'm not so worried about the uh, Hero or Session 4 because it's water resistant down to 30 some feet. But no water resistance here at all. Uh, one last thing that I do want to talk about is audio. Audio with GoPros. Um, when you've got like any of your large heroes in a <coughs> excuse me in a case in a standard give me just a second in a standard waterproof housing like this you're not going to get good audio at all but these are not designed for you to get good audio what is designed for you to get good audio is this thing right here that I have my GoPro in and it is called the frame and the frame is the bomb for audio it has uh, dust covers here and here where the two speakers are for the GoPro you can also take this and flip this little piece of metal out here which I can't get out at the moment but you can flip this out so in case you have the backpack or the LCD screen on the back of your Hero you can still use the frame. So that's it. That ends part three. Hope you guys have enjoyed how I bring the videos to you. I hope it has given some people some ideas on how they can easily uh, bring their channel to life. And don't be afraid to get started. It doesn't matter what you put. I have so many people asking me, well, what should I do it on? Well, I'm not in your head. I don't, I don't know what you do. If you're a gamer, post videos of gaming, gaming tips. If you're, wh whatever your niche is. If, if you build uh, bicycles, do videos on bicycles. If you're a tinkerer, do things on what you tinker with. If you're you know, an experimenter or what have you, do videos on what you do. That's what's going to work for you, and that's what viewers are going to pull up and search and look for like all of my Briggs engine videos and small garden tractor videos on uh, the Zip of Varga channel that's what people like and that's what they get so that's it this is ends Zippo's vlogs later